Hello, my name is Jay Becker. I'm a senior applications engineer at Dunker Motor USA. Today I'll be discussing the white paper titled, Why Pay for More Than You Need? It's a question that comes up a lot of times with an OEM when they come to deciding which servo drive they want to use for their application. Today's technology brings the servo drive manufacturer many choices and options when it comes to deciding what features they want to put in their servo drive. Oftentimes many of these drive manufacturers opt to design in a full featured drive that can basically do everything. The problem with that is for the OEM many times is that if they choose that route they're often going to end up paying for features that will never be used in their application. I'll be reviewing several options that Dunker Motor has to offer that enables the OEM to choose features and drives and controls tailored to their application at a price that's tailored to those features. On the very basic end of the scale, we have the KI motor, which stands for Commutation Electronics Integrated, or this motor right here. A lot of times an OEM, let's say a pump or a fan manufacturer, wants an easy way to migrate to a brushless motor solution where they were previously using brush type motors. With brush life being usually the, the limiting factor in a DC brush type motor, uh, it's desirable a lot of times to move to a brushless solution. but it's often difficult to migrate to a brushless solution because of the added complexity and I.O. And, and interface needed to do it. The KI motor offers the OEM the ability to migrate to a brushless solution, in, in many cases, depending on the frame size, with just a two-wire solution. They then won't have to change any of their interface electronics where they were using a brush-type DC motor before and can go right to a brushless motor solution with just two wires. Where speed control is required, we have the SI motor, in this case a 44 millimeter SI, which stands for Speed Control Integrated. It offers a four quadrant digital speed controller that enables the user to control the velocity of the motor with an analog input and start and stop the motor reverse direction through digital I.O. The next step up in integrated electronics for us is the PI motor, which stands for Parameterization Integrated. This is an example of the PI motor. It has a 65 millimeter motor, an encoder on the back, and a gearbox on the front. Um, this motor is often selected for reasons where you need to have more control other than just commutation electronics or speed, elect speed control electronics. A software package that runs on a PC or a laptop is used to set up the behavior of the motor through parameterization. It connects to the motor where this yellow uh, cap is and allows the user to select many different modes of operation with the software. Uh, one mode might be analog or digital torque control, analog or digital speed control, analog or digital position control, and also modular positioning mode. Once the user uses the software to set up the behavior of the motor, it's downloaded into the motor and the connection to the PC is no longer necessary. At that point, the motor operates with the program and parameters loaded into it and interfaces to the user's machine, whether it's a PLC or, or switches, through digital and analog I.O. And no other control is necessary as the program or the motor's behavior resides within it. Another common trend in machine and system design is the use of distributed control. We have a number of different field bus motors that we can offer the OEM that allow the motor to be a slave in a network, uh, responding to commands from higher level controllers, whether it's a PLC or an HMI. The first of these field bus motors I'll discuss today is the CI motor, which stands for Can Open Integrated. These motors allow us, in this case, uh, this motor here is an example of a CI motor with a right angle gearbox. Uh, this motor allows us to be a slave, a can open slave, on a network of up to 127 other motors controlled by the customer's master. Whether that master is a PLC or an HMI, um, it allows the user to access both the Canon Automation DSP402 object dictionary as well as our manufacturer specific object dictionary. And all of those parameters are accessible over the network for operating a motor, uh, setting parameters, and setting and reading the I.O. of the motor itself. Similar to the CI motor that I just mentioned, the PB motor, which is 
the Profibus integrated motor, which you see here, is a motor that is a Profibus DP integrated electronic motor that allows the motor to be a slave on a Profibus DP network. It has a power connector in this frame size, a logic supply connector, a CAM connector for initial setup, and a Profibus connector, which, which then would connect to the rest of the Profibus network. Another field bus offering that we have is the EC motor, which stands for EtherCAT. In this case, we would be utilizing CAN Open over Ethernet, which allows for access of the Canon Automation DSP402 profile for drives, as well as our manufacturer-specific object dictionary. Very similar to the CI motor, the CAN Open integrated, except the, the network medium is Ethernet in this case, rather than CAN. For the OEM who doesn't have or doesn't choose to use a master such as an HMI or PLC, we have an MI motor to offer, it's, which stands for Master Integrated Functionality. In this case, the MI motor would be the master in the CAN network and operating several, for instance, CI motors as CAN open slaves. As in the case of the CI motor, the MI would also make use of either the DSP402 profile for drives or the manufacturer-specific object dictionary. To conclude, having many different levels of functionality in integrated electronics allows the OEM to select and pay for only what they need for their application and not be forced to pay for bells and whistles that will never be used. For more information or to read the white paper in, in its entirety, please visit our website at www.dunkermotor.com. Thank you.